Hi guys, this is Max, the blonde Asian gangster expert from HighOnAndroid.com where we get on Android every day. Anyway, today's topic is RAM and RAM management and how it works on Android. Now in my OnePlus 3 video, I was talking about how more RAM can help larger resolution screen. A lot of haters and trolls out there were saying that I am stupid, dumb, and RAM had nothing to do with display. Rather, it has everything to do with multitasking. I am sick and tired of these dumb people who do not understand how a computer works. But I'm not making this video for the haters, but I'm making this video for everybody so you guys can understand how RAM and RAM management works. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, first, what is RAM? All right, R-A-M, it stands for Random Access Memory. Now, Random Access Memory basically is storage space, just like your hard disk. Now, the difference from a hard disk is that RAM is about 1,000 times faster, maybe like maybe 10,000 times faster, but you can only store data while the phone is on. So as soon as you power off your phone, anything that's stored in RAM gets lost. So it's not a permanent storage. Rather, it's a temporary storage, but it is a thousand times faster than your hard disk. So why do we need RAM, all right? So this is how a computer works, how an Android phone works. This is how anything with a display with a computer chip works. For example, let's say OnePlus 3. To display anything on OnePlus 3, the CPU reads permanent data from your internal storage, writes it to the RAM, and then the CPU sends that data from the RAM to your display. Now, now you can read straight from the disk to your display. The reason why we don't do that, it is because internal storage is about a thousand times slower than the RAM, right? Plus, if you have redundant stuff, so every time you type on your keyboard, it is reading every character from your RAM and writing it to your display. Now, if that was on your hard disk, every time you type, it would have to read from your hard disk, right? But if it was in the RAM, it's thousand times faster. So when you read, you can go ahead and read thousand times and it will still be faster than your internal storage. All right, going back to the OnePlus 3 video, to all you haters and trolls, this is why if you have a 1440p display, more RAM can absolutely help. RAM has everything to do with your display and how many pixels you have on your phone screen correlates directly with size of your RAM and that in turn affects how fast your phone runs. That is basics of computer engineering. All right, if you don't believe me, I got a computer engineering degree over 10 years ago at UC Davis, pretty good college in California. And you don't have to go to good college to learn this. If you took computer engineering, by the way, it's different from computer science. Computer science is mostly programming. Computer engineering, on the other hand, we learn programming and how the CPU works. We learn to design the CPU. Basically, getting a computer engineering degree is harder than becoming a doctor, becoming a lawyer. And for those of you taking computer engineering classes or have, don't forget to hit the thumbs up for your fellow computer engineer. All right, that's why I can call myself the blonde Asian gangster expert, y'all. Oh my God, he's right. It took me five years to get my degree. It is super hard to get good grades in computer engineering. But guess what? I aced all my computer engineering classes. All right, I just love computers and how it works. All right, next, let's go ahead and talk about RAM management. So how does RAM management work? So when you play Asphalt 8 on your phone, it will load, you know, five to 10 seconds before you play the game. Now, what's happening behind the scenes? First of all, that game is about 1.5 gigabytes big. That's all the game data that's stored in your internal storage. So when you load up the app and it says it's loading, basically what it's doing is reading all the game data and writing it to the RAM. So for Asphalt 8, it's probably reading and writing over a gig of data, game data. So when you're playing the game, it does not have to read from your internal storage. It reads and writes from your RAM to your display over a thousand times faster than reading and writing from your internal storage. All right, did you guys get that part? If you did not get it, rewind 10 seconds, watch that part until you understand it. That's how RAM works. So where does RAM management come in? So let's say you started playing the game, 
and you switch to Gmail. So depending on how the RAM management algorithm is, it will either keep your Asphalt 8 open or it will close it, all right? Phones like Samsung phones, they have aggressive RAM management. If you have a lot of apps open and you switch to another app, it will try to close it. The RAM manager will be like, damn it, this guy's probably never gonna come back to this game. Let's clear up RAM for Gmail. All right, so it's very aggressive. So that is why when you do these speed tests with a lot of games, it will not keep a lot of them open. So when you go back to the game, it will start from scratch. On the other hand, let's say for example, one plus three, it will keep more apps open, all right? It's just less aggressive. So let's say you play three games, go to Gmail, it'll keep all of that five gigs of game data in your RAM and also open Gmail. And the RAM management is saying like, oh, he's probably gonna come back to the game. Let's keep all the games open in the RAM. All right, so that's less aggressive. RAM management. Now this is all software, depending on how you write it, whether you're Samsung, LG, OnePlus, how you write the code, it can be aggressive or less aggressive. Now it doesn't mean having aggressive RAM management is better than less aggressive and vice versa. You will always have more RAM to play with. So when you open up new apps, you will be able to load it up fast. Now with less aggressive management, if you leave too many apps open and you run out of space, for example, let's say you, you already have three games loaded and then you load up Asphalt 8, which requires a lot of memory, what it will do it will calculate and uh, say that, oh, I need more RAM. So it will clear out all those apps. Or if it's badly coded, it will use up whatever is left of the RAM and then it will try to close out the other apps, right? And then it will slow down the loading of the game. And if you guys have seen the speed test from C4E Tech's test, that is essentially what is happening. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that one plus three RAM management is bad. It's just less aggressive. That is why those type of speed tests are not accurate and I don't do them. For example, in C4E Tech's speed test video, you will see that the Galaxy S7 Edge outperforms the OnePlus 3. Now my theory, I haven't tested it yet because I don't have a OnePlus 3, is not because of RAM or the RAM management, but because of the internal storage. Like I said, you read from your internal storage, your permanent storage, and write it to the RAM. So the RAM is always thousand times faster. The CPU is like a million times faster. The bottleneck is always the internal storage or hard disk on your computer. That is why when you build a PC, you don't buy the most RAM, you buy the fastest hard disk because that is where the bottleneck is. And that is why all of you prefer SSD because the read write speeds are much faster than regular hard disk. It's the same thing with Android, iPhone, anything that is a computer. So to conduct a scientific expert gangster method of testing these phones, we need to test them separately. Don't do speed tests. Test out how fast your internal storage is. Now what I'm guessing is that the UFS 2.0 technology on the Galaxy S7 Edge is much better, faster than the one on the OnePlus 3, right? They can both have the USF 2.0, but one can be faster with better tech. So what we really need to do, if you wanna get nitty gritty and super 100% accurate, we need to find out how fast read and write speeds are on the internal storage. Isolated test. And then we need to do an isolated test of the RAM. But so long as it's like DDR4, most of those specs are the same. Even then, RAM has less to do with performance of your phone than the internal storage. Now, as far as the CPU goes, what does the CPU go? It processes the things. It's basically the pimp daddy. While the RAM is the whore number one, the internal storage is whore number two. So what I'm saying is that RAM isn't everything. RAM management isn't everything. You also have to balance out your bottleneck, which is your hard disk, your internal storage, UFS 2.0, eMMC. You just learn the basics of how a computer works or how Android works or how iPhone works. I mean, there are some details I left out, but in layman's words, that's how it works. So next time you see a speed test video, RAM managed video, think about these things and see how it applies to that video, to that test. And then you'll be a smarter consumer and be able to compare which technology is actually better. What you don't know, now you know. All right, don't forget to hit the thumbs up for me. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Periscope. And as always, stay on Android. This is your internal storage hard disk. This is your RAM. This is your CPU. Oh. Hi, click here to subscribe. Click here to subscribe.